Hi, this is Merv Barrett from Real Estate Connected, the creator of Easy Property Listings. And in this video, I want to show you how to use and install the next version of FeedSync, which has been upgraded and improved to make real estate websites easier with the REA XML feed format for listings. So what I'm looking at here is FeedSync 2, and some of the new features, we, what we've done is we've created, uh, we're now importing listings into a database. Uh, before we were creating files, and some servers were not having the best time with importing that. So what we've done is we've created a lot more smarts for FeedSync, and I want to give you a quick demonstration, and then we're going to walk through and install a fresh version and process some files. Uh, so with the new version, we have a process tab, which allows you to process the files manually. This is mostly used when you first set up. We've also got a, a, a geocoding function, which can process all the geocodes or get the coordinates lat long from Google servers on the first install. And I'll explain that when I start with a fresh version. You can also export the files in a format if you wanted to have it create a list, so you can actually output the different uh, types or all at once. Um, you can also visit the listings page and browse all the different listings that are present in the database at the moment uh, and filter them through to make sure that everything's okay um, and see what's there. You can also have a look at what the imported files are uh, that are sitting in the, in the that have been processed already. Um, and you've got an extensive help. We've improved the help to explain how to install this, uh, the site. And we've also improved the cron commands, so it's much easier to set up FeedSync on your server. So let's get started. And I'm going to walk you through how to install FeedSync uh, from scratch. So what I've got is a copy of FeedSync. I've just downloaded the zip file to my computer. And I'm as you would download it from our site at Easy Property Listings slash FeedSync. And we're going to extract the files onto the desktop. It makes it easier to connect via FTP. Now in this demonstration, I'm using uh, FileZilla uh, for connecting to the server. And I've already established a connection and set up my FTP accounts. If you've done any FTP, this should be pretty straightforward for you. Alternatively, you can log in to the control panel and upload a version of FeedSync that way as well. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to create a folder inside our main website folder, and we're going to just give it a name XML. You can actually call this anything uh, for if you want to sort of hide it and give it some strange ID so it's not uh, publicly available to people, but I like to keep things sim simple. There's not too much private information that's available with this, so I'd leave it as XML. Then we're going to upload these this whole directory into the XML folder. Uh, so while that's happening, um, we need to after we install the software, we need to create a database. So there is a slight difference with this version of FeedSync. Before it didn't require a database, but in order to make it better, faster, and more easy to use, we need to create a database. And it's much the same way as you would create a WordPress database for a new website. So what you need to do, once you've uploaded the FeedSync folder, is hop into the main folder here. And we've kept the files to a minimum. So everything when you when it comes to upgrading, our goal is that you'll just have to update this one folder and replace all the files and leave everything else as is. Um, but we have one configuration file which needs to be set up. So I'm just going to open that now and show you what the settings are. So here we've got FeedSync, the configuration file open. And there are just a few settings that we need to take care of in order for FeedSync to work on your website. Um, we've kept the settings in order, so you can have a look through and, and make sure you fill in the from top to bottom. Um, and it's very much like you would install WordPress on your website. So the first thing we need is a database name. We need the database user, uh, the database password, and the host name. Most cPanel installs are local host. On some uh, other hosting scenarios, the database might be on another server. So you just put the, the server address, IP address in, uh, whatever that might be. The instructions on the help page can explain that in a bit more detail. But at this, for this example, I'm just going to use local host. 
So I'm going to hop over to our C panel, which I've already logged in on my demonstration website server here. And this is just a standard C panel. Sometimes it looks a bit different and a bit more jazzy with a different theme. Uh, but most C panels, what we're looking for is your My SQL Databases option. So clicking on that, you'll be presented with a page where you can create a new database and you can create a new user for this database and then what you need to do is link the database and the user together. So we're just going to keep it simple and call this FeedSync. And we're going to press Create Database. Okay, that's worked. So we're going to just copy the database name. Sometimes it actually, a lot of servers add a prefix to the database name. So we want the whole thing. So we're going to go copy and we're going to paste that into the database name field and paste that there. Then we're going to go back and now we need to create a user for the database. Um, I'll just call it feed and then you want to give it a good password. I use one password to generate long and secure passwords uh, and paste that in there. Create the user. Now while I've got that in my clipboard, we're going to paste the password and also use, copy the username and fill in the blanks. Okay, that's almost done. The last step when you create a database is you need to actually assign a database with a user and you do that with the last option here. So we need to choose the user we've created, feed, and we're going to choose the feed sync database and press add. And what you do is just select all privileges and make changes and that's how you create a database for FeedSync. So now that I've done that, we now have entered in the database name, the user, the password, and the local host is mostly default on this in this situation. Uh, you can also enter your license URL that you'll get from Easy Property Listings when you make the purchase of FeedSync. You can also enter your license key in here, and you'll be notified when you receive when we update the software. Um, and this is the last step you need to do is tell FeedSync where it actually lives. Um, so what you need to do is browse to that uh, website and at the moment this is what, what the URL is. So we've got the site URL. Remember I talked about the XML folder and then inside there's FeedSync. So I'm going to copy this full URL and paste that in here. And that's this, as far as the configuration is required at this stage. So I'm going to save that file and re-upload it back to my server. I'm on a PC here for using Coda uh, as another good option for FTPing files. Uh, once you've done that, if we refresh, we should be presented with FeedSync. Okay, the installation went as planned. Um, and if you click all the other buttons uh, or click on process, there's nothing for it to process. Uh, it works just as before. If there's any files waiting to be processed, they'll be listed underneath the main homepage. Uh, you can go to the listings and there are none in the, in the system at the moment, so there's nothing displaying there. Uh, so let's give FeedSync some files to process. Now what we've done is made FeedSync as fast as possible and as efficient as possible. There are two other settings that we need to worry about, uh, one of which is the geocode. Now what I recommend is that you leave this off when you do your first manual process when you're setting up. You might already have a few hundred files that are required that need to be processed. So leave this off, then we'll process the geocode, then turn it on. Uh, and I'll go through that in a minute. So I'm going to log back into FeedSync folder. We now have the input folder. This has not changed from the previous version, so that everything's staying as close as we can to the previous uh, version of FeedSync and I've got myself a few hundred test files that we can drop in here. So this is how you would upgrade the system. Um, but we'll go through that in more detail in another video. Um, so let's just pop some of my test files. I've got uh, 409 at the moment and I'm gonna, there are three different formats. So FeedSync handles most, all formats of REA XML. Um, so if, I'm just gonna upload these here. This might take a minute um, to upload those files. And while it's uploading, if you visit the home page, we'll start to see the list of available files that are ready for processing. Uh, once FeedSync's configured, you've done your manual process, you'll be able to configure the cron command and your server will run this every 10 minutes and you won't have to be, they won't require you to intervene at any stage. Um, okay, so I've uploaded those files. 
is about 409. So now we're going to manually pro manually process FeedSync in order to make sure everything's working perfectly. And you should run the manual process before you automate the system. Uh, so we're going to press Process Feed, which takes us to the Process tab. And press Process again, and you'll start to see the files being processed. And it's very fast. So it's, it's, it's just, it's very fast. Um, so while we're waiting for that to process, you can actually browse in another tab. If you close this, it will close. But if you restart, it'll restart. It'll stop and restart, no problem. Um, so that's almost done. Okay, so all files are processed. So now we can actually have a look at what listings are available. And at the moment, there are 230 entries that have come through. What, what FeedSync does now is it actually records the first date of the listing. Now I've picked a sample set um, that I may not have the dates showing differently because they may have only come in once or twice. Uh, no, here we go. So for example, this, this one listing here, uh, the first time it was found uh, is recorded as the first date. This allows you to configure easy property listings uh, and the first date setting much more flexible because the, the REA XML file does not contain the listing date. So what we're doing now is saving this as a new meta field so that we can import that and then compare against the current date. So this one came in on the, two, I've just picked some sample files from last year, uh, and it's two months later, it's still being. So FeedSync is bring, checking the file, looking at this record, and going, okay, is it new, or is it old, or is it the same? And if it's new, it'll overwrite the details, the contents of the actual listing, uh, but it leaves the original date. And you can see it's withdrawn. Um, again, you can jump through the different tabs and quickly check which ones are current. So we've got uh, 143 in our system here that are current. You can click through to see the withdrawn, uh, leased, sold, and so on. Okay, so now that that's done, we also have a coordinates tab. And this is very important to make sure your coordinates are, are done on import. Uh, it saves your Google credits going down. You have 2,500 a day uh, with a Google uh, geocoding account. Uh, but what you need to do is, once we've processed, so all the listings are here, we're just going to jump back to the process and we're going to process coordinates for all those listings. Once this is done, we can enable the, the geocode option to on, and from then on it will automatically process. But this saves you processing, say, 5,000 files and using up your credits. So we want to try, try and keep things as streamlined as possible. So the first thing is import it manually with the geocoding option off, process the coordinates, so it'll actually go through and it'll process only 100 or 230 entries. And then once you turn it on, it will copy and paste the coordinates and will minimize your geo credits being used. So jump to the process tab and press process. Okay, so it's currently processing the um, coordinates for the different listings and you can see what's happening. And while that's going, I'm going to open the listings in a new tab and we'll be able to actually see the coordinates being written uh, to the, the site. Um, so if I refresh the page, it's, it's asking Google for each of the addresses uh, where they are. This allows you to use the advanced map um, and display three, 400 listings on one map because you're, what we do with the advanced map is we're only sending Google the coordinates, uh, which is much faster for them to return the map um, with three, 400 en entries versus having to ask each time uh, what's going on. Uh, there's a few duplicates in here. You're probably wondering what they are. Um, so am I, but they're all got, they have a unique ID. And I, like I said, these are test files. Um, so these might have been put in there by multiple agents, or it could be the agent might have had several listings in one place. I've just, like I said, I've used a, a, a sample set of files. We've tested it. We've put it through its uh, as much testing as we can, but it's ready for you to use. And there we go. So all the coordinates are done. And now if we jump back to the process and process it again, it's only going to look for any entries that do not have um, any coordinates. So what we'll do is we're going to enable geocoding next. So I'm going to just edit that, save the file. And because I'm using FileZilla, you need to re-upload it. And there we go. Again, FeedSync works much as it did before in the way it handles files. So if I refresh my input folder, if I refresh my input folder, you'll see they're all moved. They've just been moved to the process folder. So now we'll have a few hundred entries in there. As you can see, FeedSync just 
merges all these files so you can import them into your application. Uh, with WordPress we use WP All Import Pro, it's a fantastic plugin. Uh, you can use it for anything, to import anything into WordPress. Um, I highly recommend it. Um, 2009, 14. Okay, so I've got some more sample files here. I'm just going to reprocess a stack. Another 66. Uh, now, normally, most usage scenarios we see, you probably get 10 files an hour at the most. Uh, as agents update them, the new files come across and are uploaded into your input folder uh, from your REA XML provider. Um, so this is really a, a big case uh, test case we're using here, which is unusual, but I like to uh, make sure everything's working perfectly. So I'll go back to the home page. So let's pretend the the feed provider just chucked in a whole pile of new files. We're going to go process feed again. I have enabled geocoding this time, so it will geocode the records as it's required. It's going to go a bit slower because it's checking it each time, and we'll double check once that's finished. Okay, so that's finished, and if we go visit our listings, we should see that all the records have got a geocode entry. Um, so that's that's how you install FeedSync. Now, once that's up and running, the next part that we've changed is before we used to output files. Uh, what we do now is it's much more dynamic and much easier to use. You can actually use one import script to import all types of listings. Uh, or each type of listing, for example, residential, that's one type. We've got rentals. Um, we, because Easy Property Listings uses separate post types uh, in order to keep everything really cool. Uh, so if we jump to the Help page, you can also test your geocode credits here quickly. That's all fine. So just in case you're wondering why it's not geocoding results, you may have exceeded your 2500. This is more happens more on bigger installations uh, with thousands and thousands of listings. But uh, what we've done here is we got exporting. So we have a tab to export files, but that's not how uh, we want to do this manually. So what we have is a function. Uh, so we've got an output function and you're allowed, you can change the different values. So we have residential and this would be the different post types. You've got seven. Residential, rental, land, rural, business, commercial, and commercial land. So you can adjust those depending on what listings are in your source file. The status can also be changed. So you can actually output current listings, sold, withdrawn, off market separately, uh, but what we like to do is output everything of one post type. Then you can set up one import job to do sold and current withdrawn off market all at once. So we're just going to copy this this command, and I'm going to open up a new tab and paste that. And this is now outputting a REA an XML file that you can import, and it's always up to date. It comes directly from your server. Um, and there are a few hundred. So here we've got a sold listing. We've got probably a few hundred of sold listings. Let me just scroll down and see if we have find some current ones somewhere. Ah, there's FeedSync current. Now, as you'll see, what FeedSync has done is added two additional fields. So we've added the first date, um, and we've also added a new geocode field. That is that you can import that data from, and we're updating our WPL import scripts to match the new FeedSync format. But that's that's pretty much how you install FeedSync. Uh, once that's up and running, you can create your import script on your website, and instead of using a file, you just use the action here and either residential or rental. When you paste that into WPL import Pro, and it will automatically output exactly what you have in your system, allowing you to set up one import script instead of multiples per listing type. Um, and that's how you install FeedSync. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Again, we have a, a active support form over Easy Property Listings. If you have any queries or questions or need any assistance, please jump over to easypropertylistings.com.au forward slash support, and we'll be happy to help. Thanks for your time. And, uh, Make sure you check out our store, and we've been releasing new extensions. We've got our new brochure extensions. Uh, the Listing Unlimited allows you to add additional fields to your listings that are not present in FeedSync uh, or in the REA XML file. Uh, our advanced map has been significantly upgraded. 
with additional map tabs and listing types. Um, it's very dynamic. Um, make sure you follow us on Facebook and we're also available on YouTube. Um, and thanks for watching.